The Roborock Q Revo is now a year old and still represents an impressive value, except it has one glaring issue that was never really fixed. Object avoidance. My name is Jamie Andrews and this is the Q Revo Max V with Reactive AI Object Avoidance, which should in theory improve object detection and avoidance. The old model only included a single light sensor up front, which is just not effective enough to avoid objects hidden from the LiDAR below the deck lid. Looking at the new Max V model, we now have an RGB camera, structured light sensor, and an LED fill light for dark areas of your home. We will certainly test it, but first let's take a closer look at the Max V. Up top we have a home and power button along with a protected LiDAR sensor. Around back we find a set of charging contacts and a single fill hole for the dock to fill the smallish 80 milliliter internal water tank. The dust is extracted from the internal dust bin through this port located on the side. Under the lid we have a Wi-Fi reset button and indicator light along with a QR code to download the Roborock app. The dustbin is 330 milliliters in size, which is 6% or 20 milliliters smaller than the old version and includes a washable paper filter without a pre-screen. Under the front, we have one extra cliff sensor for a total of five, a side spinning brush, and a dedicated carpet detection sensor. Around back, the mop pads and plates are unchanged, but we now have a swing out edge mopping system designed to get the mopping pads closer to your baseboards and furniture. The pads now lift 10 millimeters, which is three millimeters higher than the old model. The all rubber roller brush with removable ends are unchanged. However, now the roller housing can lift up while mopping and traveling to and from the dock. One last change up top is the addition of three microphones on the LiDAR cover for the included Hello Rocky voice assistant. Looking at the dock, it may appear at first glance that nothing has changed, but there are changes. In the base, the left vent hole is still fake, while the right one extracts the dirt from the robot. The charging contacts along with the water fill port are in the very back. The dock tray is unchanged from the old model and is a one-piece solid design with removable filter for cleaning. Dirty water is extracted from the tray via this rubber hose in the back. The dust bag is unchanged in size and is 2.7 liters. The dock's clean water tank is now 4 liters, which is an entire 1 liter smaller in size and includes a place for a silver ion block, which must be purchased separately. The dirty water tank is also a bit smaller at 3.2 liters, which is just 300 milliliters smaller than the original. So how do all these changes stack up? Let's start with testing with my carpet pickup test where I scatter 54 grams of colored rice on my medium pile carpet and send the robot out with one pass to pick up as much as possible. The Max V has a 27% larger 7,000 Pascal vacuum motor and it was able to pick up 52 grams or 96% of the rice, which is a good score. On tile floor, I scattered 130 grams of premium cat litter and gave the robot one pass to pick up as much as it could. I run all of my tests multiple times for consistency and always go with the best test result in the end. It was able to pick up 119 grams of the cat litter or 92%. On to the mopping test where I use exactly four milliliters of baked on hot sauce on my tile floor and sent the Max V out in deep mopping mode with two passes with room temperature water and no detergent. It was able to clear nearly all of the hot sauce, which I'm going to call 95%. I also tested the lifting mopping pads and thankfully Roborock pauses the robot long enough to completely lift the pads a full 10 millimeters before proceeding onto the carpet. The result is the carpet stay completely dry. Next is arguably the most important test of this robot, which is my obstacle avoidance test, where I place a few items around my living room for the robot to avoid. I have to say I was a bit shocked at the test result as it collided with everything but the cup. 
as you can see here in the app, it only managed to detect the shoe. Since the big news with the Max V is the upgraded object avoidance system, I will run a few additional tests, with the first one being two piles of fake animal waste on carpet. And while it did pick up and correctly identify one of the piles, it still managed to collide with it. On tile floor, things improved, where it completely avoided the same two samples of fake animal waste. Cords were an entirely different story, where sometimes it would avoid them and other times completely ignore them regardless of the floor type. On a brighter note, with the addition of an RGB camera, you can now enable two-way audio with video so you can interact with your pets while you're away from the house or simply watch the Max-V do its thing while cleaning your floors. The other upgrade with the Max-V is with Roborock's built-in voice assistant, Rocky, which can respond directly to your verbal commands. Here are a few examples. Hey Rocky. I'm here. Dry the mop. Okay, let's start drying. Hey Rocky. I'm here. Volume down. Hey Rocky. Wash the mop. Okay, let's start washing the mop. Hey Rocky. I'm here. Clean the living room. Okay, moving on to the dock where we have a few tests to run with the first one being hot water mop washing, which Rubber Rock claims to reach 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I started with 76 degree tap water and placed my temperature probe right at the water outlet in the dock base and measured a peak temperature of 118 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 22 degrees short of the claim, although it is still what I consider to be hot water. While washing in deep washing mode, I found the amps to briefly peak at around 12 amps and then quickly fall back off. It did this for a total of four times during the washing. Speaking of washing modes, there are three to choose from. Light, which uses 200 milliliters of water, balanced 260 milliliters, and deep at 310 milliliters. After my hot sauce test, I placed the robot on the dock and here are the results after just one deep mop washing cycle. The new dock also has dirt detection in it, which can rewash the mopping pads if they're too dirty. Additionally, the robot can automatically remop the floors if they were found to be too dirty in the first pass. Once the pads are washed, they are then dried with hot air on the dock. Roborock claims this to be 113 degrees Fahrenheit. However, in a turn of events, I was able to achieve 128 degrees, and sure enough, after two hours, the pads were completely dry, as was the dock sink. Power readings while drying were around 0.6 amps and 70 watts of power. Next, I tested the ability of the dock to perform an auto empty on a full dustbin, and after just one run, it was able to completely empty the dustbin. One thing I noticed right away is the improvements made to the dock sound when emptying. I measured about 70 decibels from 6 feet away, which is a full 10 decibels less than the original dock, and is much easier on the ears. The robot is also much quieter on higher vacuum levels. On balanced vacuum mode, I measured 55 decibels, and on max, it only went up to 63 decibels. Okay, that concludes my test. Now for some pros and cons, starting with the cons. For me, the biggest con is the biggest letdown, which is the reactive AI object avoidance. With the addition of an RGB camera, I expected some decent improvements, but it fell short of expectations, which is disappointing. This might be because of the lack of extra light sensors, and the lack of a larger onboard processing unit found on the S8 Max V with its reactive AI 2.0 system. But I am hopeful that it just needs some sulfur refinements instead. The next con is with the less than advertised temperature of the hot water for mop washing. Now personally, I don't think this is a big deal as it is still what I consider to be hot water, but it still should be higher and closer to the advertised temperature. Next, some people may be turned off with the smaller tanks, especially the dock's clean water tank, which was reduced by an entire liter. I am generally a big fan of voice assistants,
but I was forced to turn this one off as it was frequently responding to general conversations or TV shows in the same room. I do expect this should be approved as this is an entirely new system from Roborock. Now for some pros for the QRevo Max V. The biggest pro is with the excellent across the board cleaning ability which now includes edge mopping. The water control on floors was excellent and very customizable with the ability to choose from 30 different water levels in the app. I like the addition of the swing out mopping pad which was able to mop close to my baseboards and furniture. It will retract when needed but it also has a spring loaded arm that won't put too much pressure on the furniture unlike others I have tested. Rubberock made some significant strides to quiet down the robot and the dock. Even on the highest vacuum mode it is pretty quiet. Overall the dock on the original QRevo was very impressive and for the most part it still is and is considered to be one of the easiest docks to clean on the market. Finally, it would not be a Roborock without mentioning the excellent navigation and app experience which are industry leading. To conclude this review, I must first say overall, this is not a bad robot, but it is in need of some refinements. It cleans the floors very well and is super easy to use. However, the main question I know will be on everyone's mind is as if it's worth spending the extra money for the Max V over the original QRevo or even the Pro which is a tough call. We know the hardware is the limiting factor with the reactive tech object avoidance system found on the original and the pro model. I am left feeling like Roborock may have limited the object avoidance system as to not directly compete with the flagship S8 Max V model. And if so, did they limit it too much? If object avoidance is important to you, I have some hope that Roborock will improve the object avoidance with this unit with future firmware updates and I'll be sure to test them when they come out and report if there are any noticeable improvements. I don't have the new QRevo S, yes it's an entirely new model just released, but I have been testing the Pro model alongside the original QRevo. Drop a comment below and tell me if you would be interested in a three-way comparison between the original QRevo, the QRevo Pro, and the QRevo Max V. Links to purchase are in the description below and I do ask that if you consider purchasing to please use one of my links as it goes a long way to support bringing you unbiased robot reviews. Until next time, take it easy everyone. Bye bye.